Hello there, this is Being God's Obedient Servant channel. Uh, if you're new to this channel, if you randomly clicked on one, um, I would I would uh, advise going back and finding the first video. You can click on the link to my channel and start off in Genesis 1. That way um, you can get caught up. Also, if you're new to this, this is a Bible study course. Uh, read through the Bible and explain certain things. Uh, one thing that um, I like to explain is how what what pertains to people today and what doesn't. Um, especially like a lot of people I come across think that you know we no longer have to obey the Old Testament or anything, and that's far from it. Um, pretty much we have to obey everything from the Old Testament unless it was specific laws for the Israelites. That's the only law that Jesus finished because Israelites were under a law. Um, we're under grace now, but still, that's what this uh, Bible study is. So I go through the Bible, uh, you know, one chapter at a time. And today's chapter is Exodus 36. So I'm going to jump right on in here. It's most of it's just a straightforward reading. If you've been like if you've you know listened to the other ones, we've been talking about you know the building of the tabernacle. This was the first place set aside for God to um, communicate with Moses. It was the start of the Israelite nation going into the promised land so the tabernacle was is the first part before um, the temple is to be built which doesn't happen for a, <laughs> I think a couple you know a few hundred more years later from this part um, and the temple won't be built until the son of David takes the throne King David designs the temple, but God tells him that he has blood on his hands, for he was a soldier, so he is to not build the temple. It will be built by his son. So, <laughs> so yeah, so the tabernacle is what they have until then. So we're going to jump right on in here. Some things are going to be lessons that we've uh, learned for throughout the Bible. Um, in every book, almost in every chapter, there is things to learn about God and what he has in store for us and also the blessings he has for us as long as we are obedient servants. Hence the name of this channel, The Obedient, uh, obedient Servant of the Lord. God's Obedient Servant is uh, what I named the channel, but the whole purpose of this God... Uh, Lord God wants us to be obedient servants. Um, you can't just uh, say I'm a Christian and get in. It doesn't work that way. Um, it's You have to be saved. And if you're saved, you're gifted the Holy Spirit. If you're gifted the Holy Spirit, you know without a shadow of a doubt that you are gifted the Holy Spirit. It's a feeling like no other, and you never will ever feel it again. Um, not until you're in the presence of the Lord. That's when you will feel it again, the Bible says, anyways. So let's go ahead and jump right on in here. Into, as I said, Exodus chapter 36. And I think we got, we got 38 verses in this one. So... But it won't take long, I said, because most of it's just a straight reading. But, you know, every part of the Bible needs to be read, so that way you understand other parts. Um, as I said, a lot of this is a straight reading. It's about the tabernacle. Um, it doesn't pertain to us today, but there is uh, one, I think there's one part in here it clearly does. So let's just go ahead and uh, get right into this. Uh, verse 1. Then Rot... Basileel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom 
and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord has commanded. Now, if you don't remember from the other teachings, the people don't have the knowledge to make these things that God wants them to make to build the tabernacle. And so God told Moses that he is going to give them the knowledge. And God can do this for us as long as we are obedient servants for God. None at this point in time is as obedient to God as uh, Moses is and his brother Aaron. So and God, God is, going to, is speaking directly with Moses and Moses relays uh, God's word to the people. Later on this tabernacle is going to be where the descendants of Aaron go into it that God speaks to to tell the Israelites what he wants done. Because, you know, at this point in time, Moses is uh, uh, over 80 years old. He's not going to live forever. <laughs> None of us will. So, let's continue on here. And Moses called Basilel and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. Now if you remember, as uh, the people were fleeing Egypt, the Egyptians gave them riches and gold and stuff, and this is how they had, because at the time, serving Egypt, they were slaves. They didn't have, you know, possessions like this that uh, they do now, but it said like that was part of the fleeing. God made sure that they were blessed um, where they were given the stuff they needed to continue to be blessed enough to have the stuff to do later. So let's continue on. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And here's the main lesson from this is, you know, if God's going to give you the tools and whatever he needs for you to do what he wants you to do, he's going to give you more than you need. And, you know, sometimes he gives you just enough for the situation, but a lot of other things he will give you more than you need. And that, you know, that's just the way that God's blessings is, you know, it's uh, they over as as uh, some of the saying goes, his bless his cup overfloweth, his blessings will overflow at times, and when you're ready to receive those blessings, God will give them to you, not until then. So, um, there's a song I like to sing. I, I like to sing music a, a lot, but especially this one. It's like uh, Joseph the Dreamer. I haven't seen the movie yet. I want to find it. But I found a music video of it. And it, you know, it's called You Know Better Than I. I recommend if you ever want an uplifting song or if you're ever feeling down and don't really know why certain things are, but you are, but you know that you are following God, you know that you are an obedient servant of the Lord, and you know that you've been saved and been given the Holy Spirit. If you ever get a little down and stuff, uh, say find that song. You can find it on YouTube, and uh, it's uh, it helps me a lot, so it may help you a lot. But let's continue on, uh, verse six. And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, "Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary." So the people were restrained from bringing. For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. And every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twine linen 
and blue and purple and scarlet. With cherubims of cunning work made he them. The length of one curtain was twenty and eight cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits. The curtains were all of one size. And he coupled the five curtains one unto another, and the other five curtains he coupled one unto another. And he made loops of blue on the edge of one curtain from the um, selvage in the coupling. Likewise, he made in the uttermost side of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops made he in one curtain, and fifty loops made he in the edge of the curtain which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one curtain to another. And he made fifty tatches of gold and coupled the curtains one unto another with the tatches, so it became one tabernacle. And he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle. Eleven curtains he made them. The length of one curtain was thirty cubits, and four cubits was the breadth of one curtain. The eleven curtains were of one size. And he coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loops unto the uttermost edge of the curtain in the coupling, and fifty loops made he upon the edge of the curtain which coupleth the second. And he made fifty tatches of brass to couple the tent together, that it might be one. And he made a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, and a covering of badger skins above that. And he made boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood standing up. The length of a board was ten cubits, and the breadth of a board was one cubit and a half. One board had two tenons, equally distant one from another. Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And he made boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side, southward. And forty sockets of silver he made under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for his two tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. And for the other side of the tabernacle, which is toward the north corner, he made twenty boards. And there are forty sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward, he made six boards. And two boards made he for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they coupled beneath and coupled together at the head thereof to one ring, thus he did to both of them in both the corners. And there were eight boards, and their sockets were sixteen sockets of silver, under every board two sockets. And he made bars of shittim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the sides westward. And he made the middle bar to shoot through the boards from the one end to the other. And he overlaid the boards with gold and made their rings of gold to be placed for the bars and overlaid the bars with gold. And he made a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen with cherubims made he of it cunning work. And he made thereunto four pillars of shittim wood and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold and he cast for them four sockets of silver. And he made an hanging for the tabernacle door of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of needlework. And the five pillars of it with their hooks and he overlaid their uh, chapiters and their uh, fillets with gold but their five sockets were of brass. Now, of course, here, this is our, uh, in these pictures, is an iconic little symbol saying the end of this chapter. So, yeah, end of the study here. So, as I said, this one was not, uh, 
it was not you know it's just pretty much a, a reading of understanding most of most of the Old Testament was for the Israelites but I always remember that Jesus only taught from the Old Testament because that's the only God's Word that was available um, that's the only thing Jesus taught from because that was all of God's Word the New Testament didn't exist until after the death and resurrection of Jesus so this is where Jesus is if Jesus's teachings is from Old Testament then the Old Testament is necessary for us today like I've said before in other um, videos that you know the the only part that doesn't pertain to us today is the stuff that is specifically for the Israelites you know like I said before in the other video um, I think it was two videos ago two videos ago where God was laying down the law about you know the Sabbath if you violate the Sabbath you were killed for it that's the stuff Jesus said the law is finished is and now we're under grace we're not we're not going to be if we make one mistake and sin one time we're killed for it it was very strict in Old Testament it's not that strict today we are given grace to repent but we have to repent and for those that don't know what the word word repent means it means to stop doing what you're doing and turn away from it whatever it is you can repent from heading north and then head south God may say you know God may tell you to repent from north and head east you know whatever it is God's going to tell you what he wants you to do but first and foremost is you are to dive into his word and understand his word his teachings God says if you love me you seek me if you seek me you shall find me all of that means if you you know if you love God then you'll want to know God to know God is to read his word and you will understand everything about him he doesn't hide it it's not some mystical little teaching or something like that it is laid out there flat it's you know he's it's his book is literal you know parables have a little teachings to them about understanding those you know seeds cast on good soil bad soil on rocky ground to the wayside da 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 you know Jesus taught in parables for he said he who has an ear let him hear and but God did not teach in parables God taught literally this is why it's so it's I don't think people understand today that it's very crucial that we are obedient servants of God because that's what God calls us to be is his obedient servants we are to obey him whether we like it or not it doesn't matter what we like God is our ruler and there's only going to be you know an everlasting life for his servants not the sinners the people that chose to follow the world will suffer with the world and what that means if you are following the world you're following Satan Satan's going to suffer in the lake of fire and that means everybody that follows him is going to do the same you're going to suffer in the lake of fire if you don't repent and give your life to God but um, <laughs> that's my little my little preach I guess I'm going to do today so I said this was a quick reading um, not really much to it there was a couple of little lessons in there so I'm going to go ahead and end this video and get it loaded up to YouTube and get uh, started on more uh, I'm starting to get some projects around here done to where I can get uh, focus more time on doing videos so I'm hoping to get uh, um, I said I, I want to get the whole Bible loaded up I don't know if I ever will <laughs> um, you know you know my my end may come tomorrow I don't know you know no one knows as God says no one knows when their time's up so always be ready but I would like to maybe this is you know I, I feel this is what God wants me to do ever since I've started doing this my life has when been a whole lot more blessed and happier and a clearer path so until God tells me to do something else this is what I'm gonna do 
and so I'm just going to leave uh, <clears throat> this reading here get this loaded up for Sunday and hopefully get back to doing more than just you know one or two videos a week but you know, I'm, I'm a disabled veteran I have uh, physical limitations and a lot of times like whenever I have to rest from my injuries and stuff and I gotta get stuff around the house done I can't be in position to you know save images do this and everything else to to uh, make the PowerPoints to do these videos so that's why it takes me a little while sometimes when I just have uh, you know I can't be tired <laughs> and yawning trying to do this either God knows it God understands it's just you know this is these are the uh, trials and tribulations I have to live with on this world everybody has them everybody has their own little trials and tribulations they're dealing with so I'm going ahead and end this video here and until next time have a blessed day <laughs>